Hey everybody, here's another video. I know certain people are like, what is up with all the videos? It's been so long since I've done it. I'm just trying to rock them out and get you all some videos. And I never finished doing my collection before, so I'm still trying to roll through them. This time I'm going to share with you my classic Hollywood movies. And um, the first one is 12 Angry Men. Now... For me, my classic Hollywood movies start at the 1960s and earlier. So these are the classic Hollywood dramas from the 1960s and earlier. These are not all of the ones that I have because I do have some classic Hollywood movies in other genres that you'll see when I share them with you. But these are just the dramas. So this is 12 Angry Men starring Henry Fonda. I love this movie love this movie what a great great um take on doing jury duty you know and the responsibility not only as a citizen doing jury duty but the responsibility of being a human being and taking the time to understand appreciate and respect the value of a human life and so many People, and let's be honest, so many people, you, you do get called for dirt, jury duty, you don't want to do it. You're like, it's taking out time of my life. It's taking me away from work. You don't get paid enough to justify not going to work. Uh, some people just don't want to bother going. I mean, it's lots of reasons. And a lot of people don't like jury duty. And then you have a lot of people that love it because they like being a part of the judicial system. But I think too many times people just are so blasé about it um, and you have to put yourself in someone else's shoes because you go what if it was you on trial and you knew you were innocent you would want somebody on that jury to care enough to actually take the time to decide if you're innocent or guilty and that's what this is about and you have this group of 12 men all with different backgrounds all with different belief systems all with different temperaments and um, all different class systems, and they're all trying to do, uh, figure out if this kid, and I think he was, was he like a teenager or like 20, 21? They, he's being, he's on trial for murder, murdering of his father. He said he didn't do it, that he's innocent. So they have to decide if this, this young man is innocent or guilty of murdering his father. And you have some that just want to hurry up and do it. He's guilty, he's guilty, he's guilty, let's get out of here. And then you have others, especially Henry Fonda, who goes, no, I don't think he did it. Here's why, and we need to take the time to do it right. Didn't mean to ramble long on this, but I think this movie is still timely. I think it's even more timely today than it was back then. I think this was the 40s. I can't remember, wait a minute. Is it on here? I don't know. I don't see it. I'm sure it's on here. I can't remember. But um, this is available on Blu-ray. I will eventually get it. It is on my list to upgrade it. As far as I know, the only Blu-ray um, the only Blu-ray for it is the Criterion Blu-ray. So, I mean, the transfer on it looks great. It's the Special Collector's Edition, so I'm not in a hurry. Next one is All About Eve. Love this movie. Now, I just have to say... Betty Davis is my all-time favorite classic Hollywood actress. I love this woman. I grew up loving this woman. I think I've seen every single one of her films. Um, this is one of my favorites. And this is also on my list to upgrade to Blu-ray. Because uh, it's available on Blu-ray and it's available in the Digibook Blu-ray, which... I want and because I had this I'm so mad at myself I just kept putting it off putting it off when the digibook came out and now it's not as available so I will be getting around to getting it before the prices just get ridiculously stupid <laughs> next one arsenic and old lace oh my gosh I love this movie so much this movie is so freaking hilarious people will sometimes forget just how funny Cary Grant was and that he started off his career in comedies and this was originally a stage play and then this is the movie version of it. Cary Grant is freaking priceless in this film and his comedic timing is just crazy. If you've never heard of Arsenic and Old Lace, Cary Grant has two um, older aunts who live together. 
who he adores. They raised him. And um, he comes to the house one day and he finds a bunch of <laughs> buried dead men. I can't remember if they were buried or not, but dead older men in the basement. And what they're doing is they're renting out a room to these old to these older men, to these old men. I can't remember why they were killing them, though. But anyway, they were poisoning them with arsenic in their tea. <laughs> it is so funny. See, I'm just thinking about it and laughing. Dear gosh, this movie is so damn good. So then he has his brother who is broken out of prison who looks like... Um, who looks like Bella Lugosi or something like that in one of his monster makeups. And he is so freaking creepy. So now you have him. <laughs> now you have him in the mix. So now you have these murdering two sweet, sweet, adorable old aunts. And this crazy, wicked brother who's escaped from prison hiding out there. And now a cop or something is there on the scene. And so he is trying to get rid of his brother and cover up the murders of his aunts. It is just, it is comedic chaos at its best. I love this movie. It's, from the last time I looked, it's still not on Blu-ray. The Bad Seed, one of my favorite thrillers. This is now available on Blu-ray, so it is on my list to get. This is the original, like, evil kid, man. This is the original evil kid. And this little girl was phenomenal. This also originally was a stage play that got adapted to screen. And um, some people may not like it because back in the day, stage play acting had a different vibe to it, a different way of, of speaking your lines. You know, it was very dramatic. There were pauses. You know, the way they spoke was different than they do now with the more natural tone and presentation and filming. So they, um, I think most of the stars, if not almost all of them from the stage play, were in the movie. So that's where you're going to get that same feel, which I actually love because I love stage play. I also grew up going to the theater. So, you know, stage play theater as well as cinema theater. So... But this, this film never gets old. It never gets old. Next up, this is Cabin in the Sky. This is from the 40s. This is a great uh, comedic film. It's an all-black film. It stars Ethel Waters, Lena Horne, Eddie Rochester, uh, Louis Armstrong, uh, Duke Ellington and his orchestra. And it's a great Faustian story uh, about a man who sold his soul to the devil and everyone around as you can see there's a little devil <laughs> can you see that and um, everyone around him so the movie I'm sorry trying to get that focus back the movie is basically about sins you know Ethel Waters and Eddie Rochester are married and he lusts after Lena Horne who was like the Jezebel in the neighborhood, you know. Uh, and he lusts after her, and then he has that good woman at home, and she just tries to ignore it, but she doesn't necessarily let him get away with everything. And he's also sold his soul to the devil. So you have all this, these great things happening. Um, it's just... It's kind of hard to explain. If you're like interested, look it up. I don't know. Does what's the say on the back? Uh, where is it? Where is it? I'm sorry, guys. Give me a break. <laughs> uh, it tells the vibrant fable of rascally little Joe, torn between the love of his good wife Petunia and the wiles of good time bad girl Georgia Brown, who was played by Lena Horne, and caught in a tug of war between emissaries from the Lord and Satan. How can virtue triumph over evil? And the thing is, throughout the whole movie, you have angels and demons where, you know, you have, the, you know that old thing they would always show, an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder. It's like that. 
So you have the angel on the one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder, and they're both trying to win little Joe over, and they're trying to help him or manipulate him or whatever. It's just, it's, I love this movie. I love it. I think it's almost a forgotten film. Um, I rarely hear people who like old movies, I rarely hear people talk about it. But it's a classic in a good way. Next up is Casablanca. Yes, I do have to get this on Blu-ray. Sometimes I forget. So it's on my list. Love it. What's to say? It's Casablanca. It's Casablanca. That's the only Humphrey Bogart movie I own. I like Humphrey Bogart, but I don't love Humphrey Bogart. So that's the only one I own. Next up is one of my favorite films. One of my favorite classic films. The Day the Earth Stood Still. Love it. Did not like the remake. Still love the original. I actually watched it a few months ago. Still love it as much as I always have. Uh, but yeah. There you go. That's from the 50, 1951. Yeah, the 50s. Next up, another Betty Davis movie. Trust me, I just told you how much I love Betty Davis. You're going to see Betty Davis movies. <laughs> this is Dead Ringer. Uh, starring Betty and Carl Malden and Peter Lawford. This is a great story about twins. Um, if you're not familiar with the story, you have these two twins that were always a little kind of at odds. Um, one had this man she fell in love with who was the love of her life. And the twin stole him from her. And they got married. And, and he... And years down the road, he ends up getting killed or dying, like, in an accident, a plane ac crash or something like that. And um, and so they've been estranged all these years for obvious reasons. So the good twin comes for the funeral, and it just, it turns. It takes a hard right turn. That's all I'm going to say because it's one of those movies where they're twists, and if anybody is interested in seeing I don't want to be the one to spoil it. Next up, In the Heat of the Night. Oh, love me some Sidney Poitier. Oh, my goodness. Classic movie. Who doesn't know about this film? Um, with him and uh, Rod Steiger. Yeah, him and Rod Steiger were very good together in this film. Next up, Hush Hush, Sweet Charlotte. Like I told you, another Betty Davis film. Great film. Uh, there's a dark secret in the family. Um, these, these two are cousins. Uh, when they were growing up, her cousin was taken into her home and, and raised with her. I can't remember. I think her parents Pat, died in an accident or something. So they grew up together. And this is Olivia de Havilland. And uh, what happens when they're teenagers, were they teenagers? No, they were in their 20s. They were in their 20s. And uh, Betty Davis is love of her life they were going to run off together he was a married man but he was going to leave his wife but her father didn't want to have anything to do with it he was a friend of the family something goes really really wrong at this party at their house at their estate they were a wealth a wealthy family well he ends up murdered and the question is you know she thinks that she's murdered him she thinks that she murdered him well everyone assumes that she murdered him but did she really murder him so she's haunted by this murder and uh, Olivia de Havilland comes back as you know now they're older women because now the the city or something is trying to take her house for development and so she's being forced to move and she's fighting against it and Olivia de Havilland comes back and something you know is not right about her her intentions are not nice are not good it's just like one of those whole dark family secrets and stuff just starts to unfold and you wonder, you know, is Charlotte going crazy or is something happening with her in that house? Oh, man, this is another all-time favorite film of mine, period. The Incredible Shrinking Man. But let me tell you something. This movie was way, way, way ahead of its time. And I watched it again, was it like the beginning of this year or near the end of last year? I hadn't watched it in a while, so I pulled it out. And do you know the special effects in this movie stand up? There is stuff in there they do. I'm still, I still wish I knew how they did it. This movie and the transfer on this DVD is amazing. 
it, it really is. I when I last looked, this movie still wasn't on Blu-ray. But I love this movie. Love this movie. Love that movie. Next up is Betty Davis and The Letter. Love this movie. Okay, I am so sorry. I know I keep saying that because <laughs> I don't even realize I'm doing it. I just caught myself. But this is another good one. This is a, a murder thriller uh, with Betty. Uh, I love that that tagline for the movie. Wait a minute, see if I can get it. What does it say? With all my heart, I still love the man I killed. Oh, just love this movie. Just don't kill me because I keep saying it. Okay. The Little Foxes. Man. <laughs> can I just say, Betty Davis, she's always a boss. And I'm, but she is a straight boss in this movie. This is a woman in this movie you don't ever want to cross. Ever. Um, she rules the family. And uh, this movie is all about greed. As they say, greed and corruption and backstabbing and uh manipulation and control she is a master manipulator oh my goodness this movie so i'll just read it if you've never heard about it it'll be easier it says it's the turn of the century in the deep south and the hubbard siblings are embroiled in their own money driven power hungry civil war the most calculating of the group is regina played by betty davis who, along with her brothers, demands ownership of a cotton mill expected to yield millions, proving that blood is not thicker than greed. The Hubbards would stop at nothing to push their unscrupulous deal through, even if it means destroying everyone around them, including themselves. Whew. Betty Davis is no joke in this movie. Next up is the Manchurian Candidate, the original, obviously. Um, love this with Frank Sinatra, Janet Lee, and Lawrence Harvey. And, um, oh my goodness, her name just left me. My girl from Murder, she wrote the TV show. <laughs> I mean, I've seen her in a gazillion movies, but her name just left me. Um, she plays, um, the, uh, mo mother in this movie. <sighs> Who doesn't know this movie? And you don't know this movie? This is, this is based on the truth the true stories of the CIA's um, uh, mind control programs um, to create sleeper assassins. True story. Everybody knows that the program exists and through at this point it's no longer a secret, but that's what this movie is based about. Um, a sleeper assassin. He was uh, a soldier in World War II and he and his platoon Something very bad happened to them over there, and they got changed. And um, I don't want to say it. I don't want to give everything away if you've never seen it. Let's just say sleeper assassins were created, and they're on American soil. That's all I'm going to say, okay? So, love that movie. Next up, <laughs> one of my favorite comedies, The, the Out of Towners. Again, I have a separate comedy section, but I keep this in with my classic movies. But uh, this story Jack, uh, stars Jack Lemmon and Sandy Dennis. What a great little fish in the big pond story. And talk about something going from bad to worse and worse and worse. <laughs> it just... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so Jack Lemmon and Sandy Dennis are married. They live in the suburbs in like Ohio or something like that. He has a job and if you feel like this amazing job in New York. So they're traveling to New York for him to have this interview the next day. And they get there and everything that can go wrong does go wrong. And it is the most hilarious day and night of events. That's all I have to say. Love that movie. Next up is one of my top 10 favorite is this is one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time of all time of any genre i adore this movie this is a raisin in the sun with sydney poitier i contend that this is his best performance ever and um i waited years and years and years for a blu-ray of this film it never happened until last year 
and uh, Criterion released the Blu-ray of it. This is a this is a fabulous uh, release. So if you are a fan of this film, I highly recommend it. I can't remember. Is there anything special in here? Oh, well, it's that. And then you have the booklet. Yeah, I adore this. I adore this movie so much, so much. Next up is another Betty Davis movie, A Stolen Life. Another one where she plays twins. She's very good at she was very good at playing twins. It's not everybody can do it well, but she does it well and clearly ha, creates two identities. Uh, in this one, let's see, you have two twins. One is very low key, very sweet, very reserved, and then you have another one who's like lively. She just wants to have fun and travel, and she's into clothing and da -da -da. like they're two opposites of the same coin. And the the good girl, not the good girl, what did they used to call it? The good time girl twin. Always seemed to take everything that the good twin had or wanted. Like she was just selfish. Like she couldn't be content with what she had. If her twin had it, she had to have it too. And the good twin just always ignored it and let it go until now where she falls in love with this great man and she's never had like a great love or anything whereas her twin has had a gazillion man had amazing whirlwind you know romances and stuff but this is the first time she had like that good man who really loved her and everything and then the twin takes him away from her it's just and then something really bad happens a natural I don't hate to say a natural tragedy but it was a tragedy that happened that made the tables turn. That's all I'm going to say because it's a twist. And if anyone ever wants to watch it, I don't want to ruin it. Uh, Betty Davis was amazing in that A Stolen Life. Next up is Sudden Fear. Oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite, favorite John Crawford uh, films. Ooh, I just remembered. There's one I left out. I'm going to have to go get it. But on that note, <laughs> uh, Sudden Fear, um, this is a great thriller. This stars her and Jack Palance. I'm never sure. Is it Palance or Palance? I think it's Palance. I've never heard his last name pronounced. And Gloria Graham. Oh, my goodness. This is such a good film. Okay, so this star, uh, Joan Crawford, plays a theater. Wait a minute. Did she write scripts? She wrote she wrote plays, so she was a playwright, and she was a famous playwright who lived in New York, and she also comes from a wealthy family, so she's already wealthy, and this actor played by Jack uh, Palance, sorry, there's like something going on in the background, um, but um, she cuts him from the, from the role of her recent play because she doesn't fit, she doesn't feel that he's handsome enough or good enough for the, the role that she has created. Long story short, they happen to meet on a train when she's going somewhere to uh, meet a friend for like a short holiday. And they fall in love and um, they get married and things happen and there's a twist and there's secrecy and duplicity and backstabbing and and mastermind planning and just, just oh, it just gets very wicked. So, um... Yeah, sorry. Let's see, the lighting is changing. You know me. It's getting darker. It's getting later in the day. And uh, the lighting is changing on the camera. So this is a Cohen film collection. This is a film. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Um, This is a Cohen film collection uh, release. And this just recently was released on Blu-ray, I think, last year. So this had never been on Blu-ray. The DVD was out of print. I mean, and if you were looking for it, people were, like, paying, like, close to $100, like, 75 to $100 for the DVD. So if you're a fan of this film, this Blu-ray isn't cheap. Just coming out the box, it wasn't cheap retail. But if you're a fan of it, I suggest you hurry up and look for it quick because it was a limited uh, edition. Next up is Sunset Boulevard. Love this movie. Um, who doesn't know this? You know, <laughs> who doesn't know this? Um, 
All right, Mr. Demille, I'm ready for my close-up. It's just like classic line, another great, great drama turned thriller. Um, it's it's actually a very sad story um, of a movie star, a silent film movie star, whose star is fading because now the movie industry has gone into what they called talkies back then, which we know as movies today. But that's when sound came into the movie industry, and now silent films were out. And um, there is no longer a place for her. And so she's living in her world where she was the star, where she was famous. And it's, it's actually a very sad story when you think about it. Excellent film. Next up is Ten Commandments. Love this. Yeah, eventually we'll get it on Blu-ray. But uh, what's funny is I'm not a huge... Um, wow, I just went blank. Charlton Heston. I'm not a huge Charlton Heston fan. Uh, something about him just just puts me off. I guess it's his arrogance. He's so arrogant. <laughs> I don't find arrogant man attractive. But he's so something. But it works in films, in, in his certain films, like in this and in Ben-Hur and in um, Planet of the Apes, which... I do have, actually. It's not in here because it's with my sci-fi movies. So you will see that. Like I said, all of my classic Hollywood films are not here. They're in some of the other genres. But, uh, yeah, he was he was phenomenal in this. No doubt you can never deny him that. And then we have Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. I have to get this on Blu-ray, but it's on my list too. That's another one I keep putting off for some reason because they're like other things that I'm going after. And then I realize certain movies are starting to get harder to find. You always think that they're going to be around and then you look up one day and they're not. And this is the case with this too. I have to get it. Uh, I want the Digibook, the Blu-ray release on the Digibook. So I will get this. I love this movie. One of my favorite scenes. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the story, let me let me say that first. Um, this plays off of the real life hate, competition, battle, all of that. The real, real life of Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. They despised each other. They were like each other's nemesis in the industry. And um, so it plays off, it's used very well in this film uh, because they play two sisters whom the one sister totally hates and resents the other. And Betty Davis plays Baby Jane who hates and resents her sister played by Joan Crawford. They were both child actors and um, Betty Davis, this character Betty, Baby Jane when she was little was the breadwinner. She was a famous vaudeville star actress. And, um, I mean, to say child actress. And she took care of the family. Um, she was, like, super rich. And then there was an accident that happens as they get older. Oh, and then as movies come in, Joan Crawford becomes famous, famous as her own, her character, as a movie actress. And an accident happens, an accident, an accident happens. And now baby Jane is taking care of Joan Crawford. And they live together together. In a house and baby Jane is very abusive and very cruel and um, she takes advantage of the fact that she has complete control over her existence because she's in a wheelchair and she can't get around and it's just it just it just gets so bad in that house <laughs> oh my gosh it's so good and one of my favorite scenes I don't care if it's a oh it is a spoiler but I don't care okay wait it's this part where baby Jane is feeding her like she terrorizes her right and she's bringing her usual meals, and this time it's like lunch or something, and she always brings it on a tray with a, pl a covered plat, you know, a covered platter. And she keeps implying to her that there's something wrong with their food and this, that, and the other. And so she makes uh, Joan Crawford scared to eat. So she's ter mentally terrorizing her, and she's getting hungrier by the day. And so she finally <laughs> decides to eat. Oh, geez, Louise. I'm not going to say what, but she decides to eat and she lifts the lid off the platter. 
It is the worst thing ever. And Joe Crawford says to her, Jane, if I wasn't in this chair, and she goes, but you are, Blanche. You are in the chair. And it is the most wicked thing because in that moment, you know, this woman is imprisoned and she is going to be taunted, terrorized, and abused by her sister for the rest of their lives. And it is just a horrifying moment. Okay, let me go get that movie I said I forgot to pull. Hold on. Okay, here's the other one. It's Mildred Pierce. Yeah, the cover got messed up and I had to do another one. But you know what? I have to get the Blu-ray, so I don't care. But this is the other one I was talking about. Mildred Pierce. This is my other favorite Joan Crawford movie. This is the one that they that was her her comeback. She got nominated. She was phenomenal in this movie. Um, a great drama turned murder thriller. And um, yeah, she was phenomenal in this movie. And if you've oh my goodness, if you've ever seen a really really horrible horrible selfish nasty ungrateful child. Um, you have not seen it until you've seen her daughter in this movie. You just want to just, oh, just cannot stand her. She's the most <laughs> ungrateful, selfish, snotty, self-entitled little bugger, you know, and she doesn't appreciate anything. And Mildred Pierce, uh, she just works her hands to the bone to try to make her happy, to give her everything she wants so she can be happy. And it's never enough. And even when she becomes a famous uh, restaurant owner, it's still not enough. She still is like, you're just a restaurant owner. You're getting your hands dirty. And I'm like, Heffa, she's making all this money. She's rich out the butt and she's giving you everything. And you still are looking down on your mother. It, she, is, she upsets me. I don't care how many times I've seen that movie. I do not like, I don't like people like that. And I especially do not like children who are like that. I have a thing about bad kids. <laughs> I do not like bad kids. So anyway, so there we go, you guys. Um, these are my classic Hollywood dramas. And again, like I said, you will see some more of my other classics um, mixed in with other genres. So Thanks again for watching another one. Uh, if you don't like classic Hollywood, I'm sorry. I guess this will be one you have to skip. I'll see you next time. Have a great one. Bye-bye.